Hello, my name is Rainer Hanekamp. I'm a trainer and consultant at Angular Architects. And this is a video about deep linking within a single component. Although this is not a very advanced topic, I don't see that feature so often in Angular applications. And I think we developers sometimes maybe underestimate the potential that it can have in terms of user experience. So this is the reason why I have created this video. I will first of all, of course, show you what this actually means. And then, of course, I will also show how we can implement that. Let's start. So this is our application. We see here a list of potential destinations for holidays. Of course, I can click on some of these cities. When I click on it, uh, some additional information just pops up and if I continue with other cities, then we see that, of course, the information is updated. Now, the important thing about this feature is that the, link, the links and the information are part of one component. And every time I click on a different city, the URL in the address bar also changes. This has now the nice effect that I can take this link, send it to somebody else, that person will open this page, but instead of seeing just links without any additional information, it is already in the case of Florence, it links or it, it, the, the information is already opened. So if I, for example, say instead of using the number seven, I want to, I want to open number two, I just click on it, we see that London is already shown here. Another good or another advantage of this approach is that the browser history also works very nice. So whenever I want to click backwards, I stay on the same component and the component just changes its state but doesn't reinitialize itself. So this is a very handy feature, of course. The way how it is solved here is by using the router link directive. This is, of course, the most easiest solution. So if you can always go with routes. If you have certain user actions like a click that cannot be represented by a link or something else, maybe it's even another event not, not triggered by any user, then it is also possible, and this is called the programmatic routing. So we see here that I have here an expander, and if I click on the title here, it just expands. And uh, the difference here is that this is not a link anymore. This is just one user action. Nevertheless, if you pay attention to the address bar, at the moment we are at ID number two. If I click on Detroit, then we are at ID number three. So the URL is also updated, but we still stay in the same component. And yeah, I mean, all the, the features that we have seen before also work here. So I can go back into my, in my browser history, also move forward, that all works. Let's now see how we can implement that. So let us start with the easy approach with the using the router link. We see here, first of all, the routing configuration itself. I mean, the trick of all is that we are using parameters inside of our URL for our for path. So we see here the ID is can be dynamic and every time the ID changes, we react in our component. In this case, in this case the component is the router link component. So let's go there. What do we see? We have dependency injection, so we are using here obviously a so-called holiday service. This will fetch us in some way all the holidays that we want to present. And we also need to access to the activated route, as we see here. For the data part, so the holidays, they are or they are fetched immediately in, in the in the construction, as we see here. And in engine init, it's a little bit more interesting what we're doing here. We say, well, we need to have, first of all, the data about the holidays that exist. And we also need to have the data about the 
parameters of our root. Nevertheless, we have to be prepared for the case that the routing changes. Of course, if the router, if the user clicks on some other link, we want to, 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 be, to, to be updated here. And that's why I'm using here combine latest. So I say, okay, when the holidays changes or when the parameter in the root changes, I want to run this code here. The holidays will just change only once because when the data is there and uh, after that not anymore uh, the root power map can of course change quite often uh, other than that it's, it's then just already very easy we are fetching the id parameter of course we need to parse it into a number and then we are just finding the holiday from our existing holidays array depending on what you are using. If you are using, for example, a service that doesn't provide you with all the holidays, but you need to fetch them via ID, then of course you would have here a pipe with a switch map, for example, that can do that. So every time the parameter changes, you're triggering a new HTTP request waiting for the, and you wait for the response via switch map. In this case, it's just very simple. Of course, if you're also using NGRX, uh, then you can also dispatch dispatch an action. Will probably look a little bit easier then. But yeah, depending on whatever strategy or choice you take, um, everything's possible. Let's take a look at the template itself. Shouldn't also be a big surprise. So we see here an unordered list. This is the list of our links for the cities. And we see that we are just using a normal router link. And then we have a diff that is representing the detailed data. It is just shown if the holiday variable is set. We always have to consider the case that the ID isn't set. So the ID is zero. Then, of course, we can't show any detailed data. Um, yeah, actually, this is what we see here. So if the user clicks on close, we just change the ID to zero and then we are not showing any holiday. And the good thing is, if you have a lot of setup code, initializing code, so code where you need to that runs when you initialize the component, the code only needs to run once the component still stays if we are changing roots. And this means when you have, for example, even a form that contains already some filled in values, also the, these values just stay in the fields and nothing really change. And the reason is for this is obvious. So the router link here, when the user clicks on it, the Angular router knows, okay, this is the same component that I have already activated, so I don't need to re initialize the component i just stay on, on on it and inside of our component itself we have taken care for that so every time the para param map changes the value is here emitted and every and everything just works as we have seen before okay and now let's take a look at the programmatic routing just to repeat so this is the view we have an expansion panel every time i click on it it just expands and is showing the detail. And of course, browser back also should work. How is it implemented? Well, uh, we have we are using the normal Angular material components. We have here the closed and the open callback. So we say, okay, uh, if the user wants to close it, we are calling this event handler and otherwise the handle opened. We are iterating over all the holidays that we have and we also have here the property where we can define if that expansion panel is expanded or not. And for that, we have stored or created an extra variable inside of our component, which stores the current opened holiday ID. How does the component look like? We are injecting again the same things that we had before. We require the holiday service. We require the activated route. So these are these two here. And in addition, we also require the router this time. And just to make it short, when we can't provide an, any router link, so when we can't provide a link where the user can click on, then we have to do the navigation on our own. 
and that means that we're just calling router navigate on whatever action that might occur. So what we're doing here is that we're just replacing the ID with the current one, with the new one. And what I would also recommend you is that you always use the relative to parameter because this means that this component doesn't need to know about the routing configure the global routing configuration it just needs to take care of its own parameters and nothing else we also of course have an event handler for the hand closed but this is more or less due to the way how this component is implemented if you have a different use case, then it's very likely that your logic will look a little bit different. In this case, I have to take care that I also ha might have a situation where the user wants to close all my panels. And then of course I need to update the DID with number zero. What's also interesting is what we see here in ng on init. You might ask yourself, why do you have to subscribe to the param to the param map additionally if you are already doing this in these event handlers at the bottom this is needed for the browser history so when the user clicks on the back button in the browser on the forward button the handle opened or closed event handler is of course not called because they don't even know that something has happened so that's the reason why we have it there. Other than that, I think it's quite clear. It's not so much code. And that's it. So as I said already in the beginning, that's not really an advanced topic. Actually, it's a very basic one, basic routing functionality. Nevertheless, I don't see it so often. It brings quite a lot of value for the user experience. So please make use of it. As soon as you see your component has significant state in there that might change from time to time, use this feature. Another use case might be where you're using forms, coming up with multiple tops, detail form, master form, something like this. There, it, there, there this feature can also be applied very well. Your users will thank you for that. And if your application is running in the internet, not just your users will thank you for that, but also the search engine, because it really likes if, you, if your application comes with a lot of URLs. And by saying that, that's it already. Uh, thank you very much for watching, of course. I hope it was interesting. Please subscribe and see you soon. Goodbye.